Back again, pulling double duty. We're going to try to make the most of our time. We've got a few ideas the last few weeks. So, so no, we didn't <laughs> sleep in these clothes and wake up and again. But it might have been cold enough. We're dipping below zero again where we would not We would have done that. Mm -hmm. So this video is going to be a little bit more... It's, it won't be scripted. It's just going to be we've got some notes and some ideas. And you'll see why. I've got a little vlog. We talked a little bit about how we were kind of back on behind uh, on our schedule because of a workload that was on us. Yeah. But another reason goes along with that. We'll actually share at the end of this video about, well, I guess you can say it's your deal. So Yeah. So I have a medical condition. I know that there's been a few comments in the last, you know, what has it been? Nine months or something since we've done videos. Very few. It's been like very few, yeah. But you know, I noticed some. Um, gosh, that girl looks bored. She's, she looks like a ghost. She's so white. <laughs> Comments like that, and it's like maybe people are being rude. I mean, people are rude, or they're noticing something about me. So yes, um, I have anemia and also low ferritin, which means low iron supply. Uh, blood storage, iron storage, I should Stop say. Stop touching the storage. table because you're shaking it. Sorry. Um, so th the blood issue is an issue for me. Because that obviously, that the iron storage, that's how your blood makes the red cell count. And so if you don't have uh, the, yeah, iron, the iron, then you're also, that affects your, yeah. is that the hemoglobin? RBC, hemoglobin, yeah. So um, you'll see in, in the vlog that I had to have another infusion um, not a blood transfusion. I don't need blood. I just need iron. But if you can't infusion. keep up with the iron and that in turn affects your RBCs, your red blood cell count, then they start pushing for transfusions. Yeah. And I'll give you uh, some ideas with numbers. So this time around, um, my RBC, as far as being anemic, um, I need to be right around a 13 and I was around 10. Um, and I have been as low as nine and when your RBC count gets down to around six, they start talking about blood transfusion. Now what's average. So that way people give an idea. They don't have to deal with stuff. Average meaning what? What well, you should be at. You should be at a 12 or 13. Ferritin is the real issue here that affects her red blood cell count. So you need to have your, your red blood cell count to be a certain number. Um, ferritin is the storage number and my doctor wants my ferritin to be around 40 or higher and my ferritin is like three one two it's like not even there not hardly even on the scale that's your iron storage that's the iron storage so because my ferritin storage my iron starts to go down it starts to deplete my red blood cell count so then I become anemic that's what that means. Yep. So if you don't know, you can do more research. That's just um, the easy way to express. And we don't want to <laughs> over-dramatize it. We know that there are people out there that uh, have to deal with a lot worse things. Mm -hmm. So we don't really, you know, it's it's just mm -hmm. something you have to deal with sometimes. And, and uh, Yeah, and, and anemia is a common situation, you know, especially among women during childbearing years. You know, if you have... If you're building a baby, you could develop anemia. There's all kinds, and I'm not pregnant, I'm not building a baby, but there's all kinds of reasons why somebody could become anemic. Um, they don't eat enough meat. They don't eat enough iron. They don't eat enough, you know, whatever. And I don't want to hear all the unsolicited advice on just eat more spinach, eat more, you know. I, I, I could eat spinach all day long and it wouldn't make a difference. Yeah. So. Um, you'll get to see in the vlog. I did. Ha I did. And she have does eat a lot of spinach, by the way. <laughs> and we're not we're not vegetarians no. either. So I mean, the meat's not a problem as far as that goes. So know that it's not that type of a it's situation. Not just it's my not diet. as simple as that. Yeah, it's not just my diet. Um. So given the blood issue, the other day I just happened to be going through my purse, cleaning it out, and I noticed my blood DPA card that you know you get as witnesses. Um, was still in my wallet and we started talking about it um, while we were traveling. I'll wait for him to come back here. <laughs> He's going to go get his wallet, I guess. I assume that's what you were doing. Yes, I did. I'm sorry. I abandoned you like that. 
and ours are really ratty looking because they're old, and I'll explain why mine looks. I'm not going to show you <laughs> those mine. Those circles there from my. There's a little circle there for like your ID to be shown through. But this is what it. DPA is. Yeah. Durable power of attorney, the no blood card. It says no blood right on the front of that. Not You could see it because <laughs> mine has been used and abused. Yeah. So, you know, the blood issue is obviously a really controversial issue uh, right now. I would say it has been forever, but, you know, right out there with child abuse, I feel like that's all the videos that I'm getting up on my feed to watch. And there was just a few points that I wanted to discuss about it. So like I said, the other day I was I was kind of cleaning out my purse and I noticed in my wallet it was still there. I knew it was there. Mine looks really old and tattered because during the two years before we were disfellowshipped, the elders were ragging on me a little bit to get my DPA renewed. Um, there was some updated version. I just needed to get updated. And I just said, I just said to myself, I'm not ready to do that because the way that the abuse was going in the hall, the way they were treating us, the the way that the abuse was going. Yes. And the way that they were treating us and the kind of social pressure I, I held back from renewing my DPA because if they wouldn't hold, hold uphold, my conscientious decision on idolatry, aka following every word that the governing body says, uh, why would they uphold my decision with something medical like a blood decision, like a blood transfusion, or like a blood decision? That's what I mean to say. And to be clear, it's not your, your DPA just isn't a blood decision. There are other things that are, uh, as far as witnesses are, are concerned, you've got other yeah. things like end of life decisions, whether yeah. or not they're going to pull the plug on you. So if you say, uh, you know what, no, I don't want you to pull the plug. And uh, again, if you can't uh, go along with what I say in my conscientious discernment, as far as idolatry, that's one of the things that it says to abstain from, right along with blood. Mm-hmm. Idolatry, blood, fornication is in that verse. Being strangled. Yep. Yeah. And, and if you can't uphold the, my conscientious decision with well, one of those things listed in that scripture, how are you going to uphold my conscientious decision on something else? And why would I put you, because you have to put a witness or a contact, uh, a healthcare agent, as they call it, on the, uh, the, DPA. the DPA here. And usually that's one of the elders. It doesn't have to be. But that's the decision. Who else can we... I mean, we're a small congregation. Who else do we trust with something like this? Because it's a, a very real reality. Because if somebody else's conscience is different than yours, especially since it's gotten stickier, because now it's not just banning all blood. And it's funny because they'll refer back to the scripture, and I often do myself, to in Deuteronomy where it says pour it out on the ground. Well, if you pour it out on the ground, you can't filter it. If You can't take out, you know, fractions. If you pour it out on the ground, you can't test it. It's poured out on the ground. Now, I'm not saying that that's what the scripture says. I'm saying that that's the way it could be easily reasoned with, with someone. But if they reason differently, well, you know, you pour it on the ground after you're done with it. After you've tested, it needs to be thrown away. Or after you've, you know. So the point is, is that what your conscience is, is the important thing in that, not what they think. And the problem is, if that, that goes right along with idolatry. Mm-hmm. It, it's, I don't care what your conscience is regarding blood. I don't care what your conscience is regarding idolatry. What does my conscience say about that? Anyway, go, my conscience allows me to, you know, drink a quart of blood. That's not what I'm saying because that would be in direct violation. I I agree with what the Bible states: not to eat blood, not to take blood, whatever. Um, I have done some secular research. I don't know. There was one article in particular that kind of that kind of swayed me a little bit because. Are you talking about that one in the Phoenix Sun Times? I think it was. I think that's when it was. What it was, and I'll look for it and see if I can find it. It's a few years old, but the article basically stated that when you give your own blood, or if you have somebody else's blood, even if it's the same type of blood, it you know matches up perfectly, whatever the case might be. Um, after that blood sits there 
for a short amount of time. Those cells start to die. And also, those cells being carriers of all kinds of yuckiness, um, not only do you have yucky cells, but then you have dead cells, and then it's filtered into, or it's put into your body, then your body has to clean it. It's just icky. It's just so, so gross. So, you know, because in those, they have that little thing that rocks the blood, so that way it doesn't coagulate and whatever else, but yep. that still doesn't stop cells from dying. That, that's mm-hmm. always going to be happening. But your blood is constantly being filtered. Mm-hmm. Well, when it's sitting there rocking back and forth, there's nothing really filtering it. So once it's mm-hmm. put it back into your body, then your body has to go through all that effort to clean out all that mm-hmm. fecal matter or whatever it is, because they do act as a filter for the body. There's no mm-hmm. doubt about that. That's what the your liver is for. It's to filter the blood. So it's, it cleans the blood back out from what it's cleaned out of the body. So Yeah, and that's just one article that I appreciated because, at least to me, that saying, like, you know, regardless of what Jehovah's Witnesses say about blood. I mean, they've got different things that they say and their stance on it or whatever. Can we do things cleaner? <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to say. And that's not to say it's somebody else's conscience who differs and decides mm-hmm. they're going to get a transfusion. Would you sacrifice your child to mm-hmm. Jehovah like he's Molech? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because that's not what Jehovah wants. We have to remember at the end of that verse, it, it mentions those three things. It mentions idolatry, and it mentions fornications, and it mentions blood. Mm-hmm. And in the end of it, it says, well, that's the same thing with the blood. It's strangled. Mm-hmm. It says, good health. health to you. So that's the point. The Bible is there to benefit us. Now, it's true. Some things we may endure for a scriptural stand on uh, and, and endure some maledictions at will, but that's not the general idea of the Bible is how many constrictions can we put on people. That's that's not mm-hmm. the way the scriptures are intended to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if somebody decided that they wanted to have a blood transfusion, it has nothing to do with me. That is between you and yourself and the creator and whatever your conscience decides, that's you. And, and you'll be accountable for and that, that's either fine. way. Yep, and I'm not judging whatsoever. But I will say this, I do have an experience to share. I'll just say, just so I can not disclose everything, but um, not share everything. I do know of a person who went through a surgery. And I want to say this was like in the late 70s, early 80s. And, you know, she she's a witness and she took her legal stance or you know medical stance to the doctors and they and she said I don't want blood when she got the bill back or the statement back or whatever it did say blood transfusion and she always felt guilty about it because I don't I don't know if she even said anything like that could be a legal situation you say no blood and then they give you blood but it did say blood transfusion on there and if they billed you for it you know they gave it to you <laughs> yeah and this person I'm talking about is an elder's wife. Um, she wasn't an elder's wife then. She married later on, and now she's an elder's wife. But So what's so funny about that, especially with now I hear that that's a, because they'd get in trouble if they actually went through the procedure and drilled you on it. Can you imagine? You're barely trying to save your, mm-hmm. your loved one's life, or someone gets their, their going through a tragic accident or whatever else, and they get transfused, and now they're going to drag them into a room and and question them over the transfusion? Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, can you imagine the legal labyrinth that would be for them to walk through? So instead, Mm -hmm. they just say now, oh, you disassociated yourself by that. Um, Well, it's mentioned right along with idolatry, but you don't go through that same procedure if someone commits idolatry, which a lot of witnesses are doing. um, (laughs) Or fornication. You don't go through that and say, oh, well, by fornication, you've automatically disassociated yourself. And yet that's what they're doing now. Now, if you take blood so they can uh, avoid that legal labyrinth, they're just saying, uh, well, you know, by taking blood, you've disassociated yourself. More mm-hmm. legal game playing. God, I hate that, the legalistic garbage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe I should have asked more questions of that person, but she just kind of shared that with me, and I thought that was an interesting an interesting scenario. And I mean, you talk about late seventies, early eighties, the early eighties, 
medically things have advanced so much since then. So yeah, there are so many more. And even in the as among witnesses, now they allow so many different things. They, you know, mm-hmm. hemodilution mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you know, cell salvage or you know, whatever else that they've got they, that they can implement that are up to a Christian's conscience whether or not they're going to allow them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even fractions and whatever else. Yeah, there's lots of changes since. Oh, except for the four main components. The four main components, because we have to, we can't back off totally, because then we'd be blood guilty. We'd be blood guilty for not allowing people to take this blood. But it's their own decision. Even though you've disassociated yourself from God, if you take it, it's your own decision. Yeah. And there was one more thing in my notes that I wanted to address, um... Because when we were, I think it was our appeal meeting, the chairman, I asked him, well, what am I supposed to do about my DPA? Because I really did want to know, like, what am I supposed to do now with this? Because I do, and it was funny because that was the, like, I just had this, inf- this, in- this set of infusions done recently, last week and the week before. And the one I had before this was when we were going through our judicial and appeal committee meetings that month or whatever. So they literally had to postpone our our judicial meeting because I was having she was meeting. having her and I said no, she's going to feel horrible. I, I, I'm not going to We're not going to we're gonna, not, we're not we're gonna, gonna do that. We can't yeah. do that. So I ask him anyway. So back to the point. I ask him. By the way, he's on the hospital liaison committee also. The watchdog group. So I asked him, what am I supposed to do about this DPA now? Because I don't have, you know, this is this legal document is no longer a document that I can I can utilize. And he said, very condescending, that's a wonderful question. You just need to go to a lawyer and fill it out with a lawyer if that's what you want to do, blah, blah, blah. I've not done anything, just just to, just so that everyone knows. I haven't done anything. Um, but there's a situation at that hall. There was a Bible study, and he'd studied for a few years, and his Bible teacher was questioned, like, well, what what can I do about this DPA? The long and the short of the situation is the Bible study got a hold of a DPA, not baptized, and you have to be baptized in order to have a DPA. No, you have right? to be baptized to have their DPA. Their DPA. Durable power of attorney yes. is simply a legal document. Not a de- DPA. I'm saying this DPA this specifically. DPA. Yeah, right. these this one that's yep. for them. So what happened was he was able to fill out the DPA. This one. The one that the witnesses provide for you. And just strike out in the document and initial what does not pertain to him. <laughs> and I just thought, what a funny thing. Because again, this is not a Jehovah's Witness document. It's produced or printed by the Jehovah's Witnesses or Watchtower or whatever, but it is a legal document. So mm-hmm. you can take any DPA form, if you will, like a yeah. bill of sale or any other legal document that you'd pull off the internet yep. and strike different things in it. But again, it's this has things like... Uh, uh, end of end of life in here. Yeah, like for for me, I put down there end of life decisions to be finalized by Tiffany Lombardi. I mean, so she got to make those decisions because I don't wasn't going to pull. <laughs> oh, you're getting a wreck. I'll pull the plug. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you the individual. I felt is uh, what do I care? I'm just I, joking. I'm by at the way. that point. <laughs> But uh, it's her that's going to have to make that decision of whether or not it's been long enough or this is too traumatic for me or whatever else. So I left yeah. that in her care. Somebody else may feel differently. Um, you know. But I'm just trying to say that that's not the only thing as far as blood or fractions or what fractions you'll allow, what procedures you'll allow. Um, will you allow the uh, cell salvage? Will you allow... Because I think... Does this open up again? No, it does not. Just to give you one of the examples here, it says in... Uh, Section 4, regarding medical procedures involving the use of my own blood, 
except diagnostic procedures such as blood samples for testing. So they automatically accept that. So you could strike that if you didn't want your blood being used for testing. Um, A, I refuse all, or B, I refuse all except, and then it's got a, a spot where you can write in there, or C, I may be willing to accept certain medical procedures involving my blood, but the details will have to be discussed with me if I am conscious or with my health care agent in case of my incapacity. I'm trying to read through my... Worn out, document. worn out document there. But that just gives you an example of the things that you could select from in there. So witnesses have drawn it up specifically for dealing with the situations that witnesses would encounter. But it's not only you could have anything you want in there. It's, mm -hmm. Again, a DPA is just a legal document to act in your behalf if you're, as I said, incapacitated. Yeah. I guess the reason why I'm why I'm stating what I'm stating is I feel like I'm a little a little bit naive on you know some decisions and I shouldn't be maybe as naive as as I say because I could have an issue with the blood. I'm just saying I would instead of you know I probably will take my blood card out of my wallet. It wouldn't matter anyway, because even if they called those people, hospital liaison, whoever, they'd be like, oh, she's disfellowship. We don't, we don't, we throw her in the garbage. So it's not like it really matters, but um, I still want to have the best medical care. And I'm not so convinced that what Jehovah's Witnesses push is the best medical care. I believe what the Bible says is true, but I don't know the way that Jehovah's Witnesses and their policies and their doctrines are so good for a person's health i just that, don't know that they should interfere with that yeah to be to be opinion. to be fair there are a whole lot of benefits to bloodless surgery and there's no doubt about yeah. that as the scripture said good health to you but at the same time everyone should be a prudent consumer um they should be judicious about what they are going to be putting in their body you know but at the same time these witnesses will go to McDonald's 24-7. I know a guy who popped his diabetes pill with a super big gulp, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, if you're going to talk about Corinthians in uh, chapter 7, verse 1, and defilements of the flesh and defilements of spirit, that could be just as equally. Why is that one so conscientious and this one's such a hard line? Mm -hmm. uh, so... Me, and I remember making situations. Yeah, and I remember making the comment discussing the blood issue, you know, in fractions, and I, and I think it applies well here. You know, you, you could say, you know what, I don't want any blood, and Satan, the accuser of our brothers, is going to be up there going, see, he doesn't respect his life. And on the same other side, somebody could say, oh, yeah, I'll take blood. I want to save my life. And Satan would make the same accusation that he did to Job. Ah, see, a man will do anything to save his life. Mm -hmm. So either way, the accuser is going to be pointing a finger. We want to have a good defense of why we make the decisions we make. And what's funny, that's the definition of provide, to be able to make a general defense for your family. And for yourself, that, that would also apply, too. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to make a general defense of, well, here's what I was thinking, and here's why I reasoned this way. Well, this scripture says this. Your son acted this way. Um, when we go before the judge, we want to have a reasoning, not just a, a wholesale, well, I don't know. I just wanted to save my rear end, so I took everything. And we don't want to be, well, I just I didn't want to think, so I just rejected it all. You know, mm -hmm. um, There's got to be some balance there of what you will and you won't do and why you'll take that stand scripturally. But it ought to be, as I think it's Romans or Hebrews, up to your conscientious decision, discernment. What you, um, how does that scripture say it? I've been trained. You're oh, trained. You're conscious. Powers, your perceptive powers. You're trained right and wrong. Yep. So that's the way it ought to be, not by some hard line made by some hierarchy. Yeah. You know, and like I said, I, I want to do more research on it. And, you know, maybe I would never be put into a situation like some are. But, um, you know, it is an issue and it's a controversial one right now. So... I'm not here to bring more controversy controversy to the controversy <laughs> of blood, but 
you know, I, I did have a few things to say. I said them. You know, if you want to leave a comment and, and give me your opinion in a nice, kind, Christian way, <laughs> that would be appropriate. And this, you know, the one thing, and we're not talking about your opinion as far as, you know, what we're going to do, but why maybe you've, what you've done to deal with that, you know, and what we're thinking as far as that situation as being one that's disfellowship. But I, I, I'll tell you what we're just kind of leaning towards is you can, like we just talked about with that Bible study, he could just use this as a template. And, and strike, strike out what he didn't want to use. Yeah. At any rate, if you're disfellowshipped, odds are you have to redo something like this, even if you want. And I think it's a great idea to have a DPA. I think being educated about uh, health issues is a is uh, one of the good things that this actually starts. As far as among witnesses, it's too bad. It's uh, as with everything, it ends up being a hierarchical oppression. But the idea of having something a DPA for your health uh, or your medical directives card, I think is another way to put it, mm-hmm. is what it used to be called, or maybe that's the new term, I don't remember. Well, it says healthcare directive right there. Yeah, oh, healthcare directive. Um, but having something like that made up is good. But on here, again, no doubt, you've probably got agents. One is probably your spouse if you're married, maybe a family mm-hmm. member, uh, but... Again, inevitably, somebody in the congregation, more than likely an elder, is also going to be on this as a backup. Mm-hmm. And if you're DF'd, that's got to change for your own well-being. Yeah, for your own well-being. Because otherwise, you're going to be incapacitated. They can't get a hold of your first agent. They're going to call the second agent if he's not on the first agent, and he's going to go, oh, well, I'm a jerk, and they're just fellowship. I could give a crap about them. Mm-hmm. We threw them away. Exactly what I'm saying. Yep. And, and that's exactly what will happen. Mm-hmm. They, they won't. They, they won't have anything to do with you. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's their definition of love. Yep. And I do, and I'm not trying to be rude by saying, you know, leave me a nice comment, whatever. But I would like to hear some experiences or. You know, somebody who is disfellowshipped, disassociated, no longer a witness, and what they do for that, or what they have learned, or what they've researched, or what, whatever it is. I, if you could send me an email through our Gmail, it's unassignedblog at gmail.com. That would be something for me to at least read and listen to, and something yeah. to get the brain yeah. gears flowing. Yeah. Turning. Yeah. Or if you have a condition like I do, where you need iron, or. Whatever. It was funny because we had a Bible study, and it was kind of interesting. So we've got this Bible study, and her granddaughters, both of them, I think, mm-hmm. have this condition where they literally have to get a blood transfusion every, I don't remember how often, but it was pretty often. Like several they times a, a year. They had a condition, yep. And if they didn't, they'd flat out die. That's mm-hmm. all there was to it. Mm-hmm. So are you telling me that Jesus Christ would just say, yeah, let those people die? Um, how about the woman with the flow of blood? Is that what he said? No, you, you don't come and touch me. That's mm-hmm. breaking the law. I can't believe you would even do such a thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't be breaking the law like that. You should die. Mm-hmm. Stone her right now. So yeah. uh, is that the way Jesus acted? I, I'd i be hard-pressed for you to find somewhere where Jesus acted that way. I, even if it was against the law, Jesus realized that there are circumstances, and as Tiffany said, uh, before the situation, circumstances where uh, Jesus just said the law is not the key point. Did the law come into sake of man or man for the sake of the law? Mm-hmm. Which is it? No, Jesus was about love and mercy, not about rigid rules. And the thing with Watchtower that I'm learning is they'll change the rules on you at any given moment. And so they don't care about you. Really, they don't. They care about themselves. They're a selfish organization. And I wish I would have known that earlier on. Yeah. That's the sad part. Yeah. So if you uh, enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, share. What else is it? Leave us a comment. You can't remember it all? No, go ahead. Oh. 
Like, share, subscribe, leave us a nice comment, hit the notification bell. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so I'm Chad had to stop and get a package and I'm just sitting waiting for him and I thought I'd just do a quick video but I just got out of my doctor's appointment <laughs> and it was exactly what I thought was going to happen. Um, I saw him in the spring and then I was supposed to see him in August. I canceled my appointment because we were in Florida and then in September I couldn't do it because um, it was like, what's the point? I'm going to see him in October, so I might as well just wait. And then we went to New York, so it was like, we're doing all this traveling. I don't have the capacity right now mentally to go see my blood doctor. My hematologist, I should call him, my blood doctor. <laughs> so he got my results back. I went in early this morning and I got my um, blood drawn and my... I haven't been anemic in about a year and a half, and I am now. And so, um, I'm at a 10, I don't know, like like right around 10, I, I should be at 12, like 12 and a half. And my ferritin is three, so I pretty much have no blood iron storage, no to build from and then now I'm anemic anemic too so that explains some of my symptoms it explains why I'm so tired why I'm so freaking pasty white <laughs> you know all through the summer I self tan and I'm outside but now that it's fall I'm I'm transparent I guess I don't know so they set up an appointment for me to do another um, IV iron so I get my iron intravenously instead of doing what a lot of people do and just take iron and you know in a pill or whatever or drink it like in a geritol type mixture whatever and I have side effects from taking iron that way so they're gonna do another IV <laughs> and I'm gonna have it done on Thursday and then next Thursday I have another one so I have two rounds so I'll film that, film, record that, <laughs> and you'll get to see what that's all about and how I feel. I hate getting these, but that's what I gotta do. Either that or take iron every stinking day <laughs> and never feel good. So um, that's my little update. I'm gonna call my friend and cry my eyes out now. I just feel so pathetic. Um, what stress does to a person and they, it just wears you down. So, I guess that's all I have right now and I will see you guys on Thursday. So I'm getting ready to go to the hospital. I'm waiting for Chad, he just jumped in the shower quick. Um, it's been a hectic day today. But um, I canceled my appointment last week for my infusion and I'm gonna do it this week. So it's actually, I've had to wait five days, which is like a big deal. But, um, it's just a really dreary day. It does not help my attitude. I'm not looking forward to this. Um, but I'll have Chad video some when we're in there. Um, so you can kind of see what it's all about. It's not really a big deal. It's just an IV, but you can kind of get to see a little bit, I guess. Um, the more big deal is why I am anemic and why I am um, low ferritin, low iron. So anyway, i sorry I'm not all dolled up like I usually am in the videos, but this is real life and it's miserable right now, but hey, it is what it is. So we get through it and move on. <laughs> so we'll video when we get there. Just about between four to six months for me. Okay. And then I just sort of like suffer <laughs> the rest of the year. Oh, so the last, the last infusion I had was last 
like not this August, but a year ago. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's been. I think I had. Were you gonna ask me something? I was gonna say the first one was a drip that was. About thirty minutes. Yeah. And then then last August I had one that was about twenty minutes. And, and I you come in like, it's like two times, right? Now, and then next week I'd have to come back and do another round, right? Two doses. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then. So this one's not a drip, though. It's just a syringe, huh? Yep. Hmm. Just a slow push. So is this a different kind than it was before, or just it was entered with a bunch of saline not last time? Not that I'm aware of. I'd have to go back and look, to be honest with you. But um, Being that it was your first one or two, make sure you tolerate it, and you sounds like you did, so... Yeah, it lasts. The only that my symptoms are, I get so tired, and then, like for that day, and then I kind of have this, just nausea, yucky feeling, and then I get like a heart chest pain. Okay. Just for like I said about a day, and then as long as I can just rest and do nothing, mm -hmm. I can recover and within a day or two, and I'm back to my normal. Okay. My normal motivated self. Hypertension is a side effect of this, so that might be where you're getting your okay. discomfort too. Oh, okay. So it's a common that's good to know side effect. Because I've told a couple of nurses that, you know, at my at different appointments, and I've talked to my doc, the doctor. I'm not going to say his name on the camera, but mm -hmm. um, the doctor that told me to have this done, and he was like, hmm, "That's interesting." And I'm like, "What's your hematologist?" <laughs> must not be something that's too big of a deal. Mm -mm. Well, I'm not dead from it, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> Do you want to hold her? Um, is she wanting to come over here really in a bad way? A little bit. She'll just get down and you'll have to bring her to me. <laughs> they have little chew sticks. And sh they're like pacifiers. As long as I have one, she's satisfied. Four more minutes. Are you mommy's girl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it just saline? Yep. Nah, it's a shot. Some of the iron. Is that vodka? Take the edge off. We'll skip the middleman, the mouth. Cold. Yeah, yeah, they are cold. So now what? They hook you up to that machine and. They're going to cycle every 15 minutes on this to make sure that my blood pressure is good. And I should be out of here in a half hour. That's pretty quick. This is the fastest one there is. I mean, I'm wondering if the side effects won't be near as bad. You know what I mean? Or worse because it hits you more intensely. Could be. I don't know. I guess I'll find out. Because the first time we were in here... It was stretched out longer. It was, yeah. I mean, it took... Wasn't it an hour or something or better for the for it to be to go through? We were here like an hour and a half, totally. Twice. Because mm -hmm. I didn't I have to come back next week. Mm -hmm. And then the second time it was. I, I just want to say, I mean, a lot of people I feel are going to give, uh, you know, unsolicited advice <laughs> on how to deal with um, anemia or low ferritin. Eat more vegetables. Eat more spinach and, you know, eat liver. I'm not going to eat liver. Sorry, I'm just not going to do it. And it wouldn't make that much of a difference anyways. No. Start it up. Mm -hmm. This is the first round I start to take my... More to That's good. So it... Fire it up one more time. Yeah. 101 to 60, get it's even lower. Good. I'm just, and I, that's probably just because I'm getting more tired. <laughs> more tired. Really low. I wonder what low is. Like, what is considered too low? You know? Beep. <laughs> exactly. Get tired. I'm so tired. I'm just I'm like afraid to fall over. I 
wonder why I don't pull the needle out to the end. In case they got to do something. Yeah, I think so. So I can just talk a little bit. It's so rough. Um, this is the day after my infusion. I was up at four o'clock this morning with some side effects, and I just couldn't sleep anymore. Just too much. Yeah, I was just irritated. So we left about seven-ish, and we're heading to. Chad's buying me a big gift. A little gift. He's buying me a, a sorry it's so rough guys. He's buying me a little tiny micro car. Um, I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I haven't had time to be excited. Um, but we sold my Fiat. You guys saw that in the video. Florida. So I'm just into these European little cars, like little tiny cars. And he's getting me an Anglia, which is like a, if you don't know what an Anglia is, you can Google it, but it looks like a Ford. It looks like a little 30s Ford, but it's micro. So I'm super excited. This car happens to be, what did you say? It was in Singapore? Pick the car up and head back. 
back. We don't know your direction, but I think we're back north because the rain is better than snow. If we can get headed this direction, it'll take a whole lot longer to turn the snow if it's wet like this on the ground anyway. They've made this a competition. This is my new dish. car. Okay. Two fuel pumps. This is my new oh, car. All the old MGTs, MGTs or MGTs at one point. And then you put a carburetor system. Look at this beautiful Lincoln. So, as you can see, it's still it's only running off of one, but you can run two. So it's an old Lincoln. I don't have very good light on this camera. My phone's not very good for dark. Okay. So this one, suppose, we're going to wait for the guy to go with the deposit. So cool. Okay. So we haven't got there yet. Can you? Okay. All right. Are you guys going to restore this thing? Is that what you're going to do? Wow. Yeah. You won't find another one. There's actually only known six known to exist. Oh, really? really? Yeah. yeah. I'm really excited. Awesome. Okay. Now, this is what you got. See the top here? I don't know how you're going to transport this. This is the original top. I don't know if you want to get rid of that because that's going to be worth some big bucks. Yeah, we'll have to probably just take it off. Okay, yeah, can we can we just take it off and you we'll could. hold it up? And... Yeah, it's going to get wet. Okay. But well, I, got, that's okay. Yeah, that's this okay. Car, this car is, is extremely solid on the floors and everything, so let it get awesome. wet. I would probably let it dry for a day or two before you start goofing around with. Oh yeah. With, uh, I'll start her up now, but. You know. So it, there's a lock mechanism, okay? Excellent. Original engine, all the numbers match. It is a positive ground. And you yeah. know what that is? Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So your positive is going to go to the the uh, the block. Yep. New battery. Just put yep. that in today. Awesome. Special hood key. Okay. So now it's attached. Thank that's you. yours. Okay. Now if I was you, Thank I'm you. going to give you some documentation. It was a um, a car for the, uh, the diplomats. This is where they have the flags. So if you want to and get all the nice nice signs out and put the the Singapore flags and the Malaysia flags, that's what it looked like in 1946. Huh. Cool. So you can imagine these people getting in with these nice outfits. They put them in the back and they took yeah. them all the way from to Singapore to Malaysia. Okay. Wow. All right. Now these doors are are going to be suicide. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you come in here, what was added to this car later is this. When we find you take it, you're going to want to put this. Because bouncing around, you don't want these doors flying. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Good idea. All right. So when you start the car, it's pretty simple. Get a little gas. Oh, no, it's a manual. Okay. Yeah, it's a manual. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see the first one. Obviously, it hasn't been driven for probably two or three months. So you probably want to kind of let it warm up. I wouldn't mess around with your brake systems out here until you oh, oil yeah. them up. If you lock it up, you'll never get it off. Right. These are original seats, and you probably want to keep them with the can. The original leather. And it was the original ignition switch. What they did is they pull in here. See that? Okay. And this is going to be a newer car. I just want to get it closer because they're over here. Does that key work on that old switch or no? No. Because yeah. in fact, you could probably go back to it because it's the original switch. Or take it out and sell it. Somebody would buy that because it's a material switch. Or try to figure out a way to mount the new, yeah. new one in the old one just to make it look like it. Personally, what I would do with this car, I collect motorcycles, so my my other half would not let me. I would probably strip it down a little bit, paint it, just yeah. to get away she was. And I'm saying if you get more resale down the road, you can just over We're not, we're not going to resell this. This no. is going to be my toy. Yeah. No, we're not reselling this. You know how to drive with the left hand? <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to learn, yeah. Over in Ireland, I had to. Really? Oh my god, yeah. And their streets are probably narrow, huh? Oh my god, yeah. They, there's like walls everywhere, stone walls and everything. So you, you, and, <laughs> Don't and, mess and, up. <laughs> well, you're going on the other side of the street, and you got these big, huge tour buses coming. Oh no. And you're like, oh my god, oh my god. And, it, and, and so you at one point pull your mirrors in. You don't want to hit anything. Yeah. Right, let's shut her down. All right, let's see if we can wrap that up in the back.
amazing once you get that thing going. You can't it. see That's it awesome. in the dark. You that same Morning. Not really. It's just we're south of Rockford, maybe about 45 minutes in Rockford, Illinois. And we woke up to this. We knew it was going to be snowy, obviously, from last night. But we're not excited about doing this first thing in the morning. <laughs> We started, to, it was about, what did you say, 2 in the morning when we stopped? We stopped at 2 o'clock, yeah. So then when we stopped at 2, it was like, the visibility was getting kind of junky. The roads were still okay, but the visibility was garbage. And it was 2 in the morning. Yeah, we've been up for a long time. And we just wanted, our goal was just to get out of Chicago traffic, which is what we did. I mean, Chicago, like, not traffic, there's no traffic at 2 in the morning, but... Well, Suburbia, you know, we didn't want to drive daytime Chicago traffic this morning. Our little creatures on the snow cover. Yeah, it is. Let's see if I can. There it is. Cute as a button. Just like this little beast. the window at a drive through and her little head would just bark off. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> this one is just so quiet. She just sits there. She's so good. She's so good. Here, just take it out of that. 8.35. Can I get fries with that? <laughs> the first one to say that everybody's like, what? I'm like, ah, shit. <laughs> 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 
all the toll people, every toll person I've ever gone through is super friendly. They're super like upbeat and positive. Every time we come to these, my dog's like, man, that's a drive through Here, I see you get money, we don't get any food. What's going on? Yeah. Oh my god. People living there. <laughs> So that was 8.35 just to drive through here. And it was 8.35 last night. Yeah, so when you say that, you know, we try to, when we say we try to avoid tolls, yeah, it makes quite the difference. Especially if you're going somewhere like Chicago. Oh my goodness, you'll pay that. We get murdered. You'll pay 10, 12 bucks every couple of miles. Yeah, it's awful. Jersey, it. we took a toll to Jersey, as you might have seen. It cost us $30 to drive, what? It was 60 miles, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. Like, holy cow. So it's it's kind of funny. When back west, you don't know why they, what's the difference between a highway and a freeway, other than one's four lane and doesn't have exits, or doesn't have uh, cross streets. Well. Now you know why it's called a freeway, because the other ones are toll ways. This is what she's been doing literally for all day yesterday, all night, and so far today. It's about, what time is it? 11 o'clock. She pretty much has not stopped sleeping. And we are going to be in so in much trouble when we get home, because she's going to be... Wild. She's gonna be a wild girl. Hey, Bubba. Little girl. <laughs> what are you doing? So tired for. Nothing to do with sleep, huh? It's all covered in slush and snow and salt. Look at that stuff cleaned off. 
Anyway, I want to look inside of here. The camera died. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It isn't too bad. Quick shot of this back here. Slide off the trailer. This is the back. A little convertible. I'm so cute. I'm so excited to have this Ford. And I don't know if you noticed that it's a right hand drive, so it's an English car. It's actually put together in Australia, but it is uh, English. It's so fun. This year now? Last year. Last year. Okay. November 20th of last year. And okay. then November 23rd of last year, my service dog, Luca, died. She was killed by another dog. Oh, no. Three days later. So it was like, oh, no. You could. It was a that. really rough go. So a week after um, Luca died, I went and got this little service animal. Swiffer. Okay. And yeah, Swiffer. Swiffer. Hey, Aww. hey, Swiffer. Hey, my little look bug. Yeah. Okay. You just here. look at her. Okay. Swiffer. <laughs> Hi, baby. Oh, <clears throat> little girl. Oh my God. You're good. Sit in. Sit in. You're good. You sit. Okay. Swiffer. Pretty precious. And um, she is a Swiffer. <laughs> Miss Jamie has lots of dogs too, don't you, Jamie? I have a Corgi Australian Shepherd mix, and he's a little buckle. <laughs> okay, you feel that? Yeah, that's the saline going in. You need some cotton? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, you're such a good helper to me. Okay. And we were part of that congregation, okay. and so after it dissolved, we went to Grafton. Okay. Oh, okay. And then the next closest one would be Botno. There's a couple in Grand. East Grand Forks. Okay. They meet at the same building. Okay. Okay, go ahead and just lift that. I'm sad to hear that though. Yeah. 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 And it's too bad because you know you're you're taught when you first join that you can ask questions and then as soon as you're baptized they turn the tables on you and say, Nope, you can't. <laughs> well so, usually the God that we know can handle questions. <laughs> right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what we, we kind of said. Like, Are you okay if I stay on this roof? Yes, I am. Just fine. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Yep. That's that. That is just the saline again. Now I'm starting the iron. And as you know, it goes in over about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Last week it was 9 minutes. Okay. About oh, 10 minutes then. Okay. <laughs> other than when did this last week. Uh-huh. Um, I always had a drip. I okay, mean, that's what I thought. I thought, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. And I, when she walked in that big thing, I'm like, what are you going to do with that? Okay. <laughs> and she's like, it's just a push, like a real slow push. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's funny that's, you said that because when I are like in the bedroom when we're like reading and reading and reading, it's like, you yeah. need to confirm that this is a push. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I would have put like, in some saline, but it says we can push it, so let's push it. Yeah. And then we talked to George, yeah. what did you do last week? But I saw that like two weeks ago, it was an ex in a right. confusion. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If yeah, you had problems with your kidneys, like if your kidneys had shut down or something like okay. that, then we'd want to give it really slow and mix it in lots of fluid. Oh, so that's why they do that healthy. then. Yeah, that's why. So oh, basically healthy. I mean, so in other words, basically, yeah, basically. in other words, <laughs> it didn't kill you last time, so let's up the dose. Yeah, <laughs> I, will I, will say, say, excuse me. I will say, and I'll talk when I see him. Yeah. This round that I've had this injection, other than uh -huh. the trip, I had way more symptoms this last week. Oh, yeah. Yesterday did. was the first day I actually felt like a real, like normal day. Oh, well, yeah. I like that. But I was really like cool. dizzy and sick mm -hmm. and real fatigued and what else did I complain? Chest pains. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. not good. Kind yeah. of weird junk like that. And like I said, when I do the drip, mm -hmm. those chest pains are maybe like a day or so and then mm -hmm. I can kind of get over that. But mm -hmm. this was like for six days. So yeah. I don't know if it's just the concentration or or what. Or something else is going on. If you're a little dehydrated, then you're going to have some little symptoms no matter what. You know? Okay, well that's good so, to know. Because yeah, I did. So be I went and bought like dehydrated. Zero sugar 
Powerades or whatever. Yeah, good. I drank a couple of those. Did that help a little bit? It seemed like it was I a little better. I bet if you're, I bet, I bet you're a little dehydrated because then, you know, it's going to be everything's going to be a little harder on your system if you're a little dehydrated. So yeah. try to keep lots of fluids okay. that don't have a lot of caffeine in them. Yeah. But <laughs> kind of dark in there. How do you feel? Awful. I feel so awful. How do you feel awful? I thought I thought that I'd be able to feel better today because I slept. I slept for what? Almost eleven hours last night. I left, went to bed at like almost ten, and it's almost ten now. But I've been up for a little while. A little while. Mm -hmm. It hurts. My chest hurts. My back hurts. Like everything is just so. There's so much pressure. It hurts. Hmm. It hurts just to sit. It hurts to take every step. It just hurts. So maybe just doing the drip next time and you're drinking Powerade there, so try yeah. to keep hydrated. I'm trying to. I know water would be the best thing, but I had this sitting here as my last um, zero sugar Zero sugar Powerade. Because I have enough sugar in my life, I try not to drink sugar. I can help it. It's because you're always so sweet. <sighs> Too much sugar is not good. Is this good sugar? A little bit of honey is good. <laughs> Too much honey is not good. <laughs> yeah. I'm, real, I'm feeling rough. I'm feeling real rough. And I, I hate it because it's like it. Mentally, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do X, Y, Z today. I've got all these plans. And my body's like, no, you're not. Okay. Well, we'll just see how it goes.